All right, welcome back to the final installment of our video lectures on theory of computation, uh, talking about hardness reductions from the reset. And in this lecture, we are looking at the reduction from 3SAT to three-dimensional matching. Uh, if we assume that 3SAT is hard, then three-dimensional matching is only harder. So we have to assume that three-dimensional matching is also hard. Uh, as a reminder, uh, this is how 3SAT reductions go. Uh, again, we're trying uh, the three set problem is given by a formula that's in conjunctive normal form. This is uh, n variables, m clauses. These are or clauses. Each clause has three literals. These literals are uh, 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 ORed together, and all the clauses are are anded together. Okay, and so. Uh, and so we want to answer yes if there's an assignment to the variables that makes this formula true. Great. And so we want to show that some new problem y is hard by reducing from 3sat to y. So we're saying that you know if, if there is some funny computer that solves y, then we can use this funny computer to solve 3sat. Now we believe that 3sat is hard, so we don't believe this funny computer exists. Okay, it's a proof by contradiction. Okay, so what are we trying to do in a 3SAT reduction? We're trying to solve 3SAT with a black box that solves some other funny problem. Okay, how do we do that? We need to use the constraints of this uh, funny problem Y to ensure the constraints of 3SAT. Okay, what are the constraints of 3SAT? The constraints of 3SAT are that each clause has at least one representative true literal, uh, and representative true literals are consistent. Okay, uh, meaning uh, you can't have two representatives uh, from different clauses, uh, one corresponding to a variable zi and the other corresponding to the variable zi bar. Those would not be consistent. This would not correspond to a satisfying assignment. Cool, and. Good. Let's uh, let's look at what is our our candidate problem of this uh, fourth uh, video lecture. So we're going to be reducing from three sat to three dimensional matching. The three dimensional matching problem is given by a set uh, three sets of vertices. We'll call them A, B, and C. And the edges in the three dimensional matching problem are going to be triples. Okay, so there's going to be each edge is going to go from one vertex in A to one vertex in B to one vertex C. So it's going to be sort of a, you know, you think of it as a triangular shaped edge. Okay, uh, and uh, uh, what are we what are we trying to do? So we're going to answer yes, if and only if this three-dimensional matching problem contains a perfect matching. A perfect matching here is a subset M of the triples, uh, where each vertex is included in exactly one triple. Cool. So that's the three-dimensional matching problem. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to show that if we have a magic black box that solves the three-dimensional matching problem, then we can solve 3SAT. Uh, we don't think we can solve 3SAT, so there must not exist this al magical algorithm for three-dimensional matching. Uh, great, let's jump in. Uh, so. As usual, I have my uh, key points here. Uh, and um, you know what we're looking to do with a 3SAT reduction and what are the constraints of 3SAT. So let's we'll review those in a second, but let's let's uh, jump in here uh, with part uh, part one, which is our forward instance construction. Okay, uh, so a forward instance construction. So we are 
uh, wanting to solve three set again. Always wanting to solve three sets. So we're going to map a three set formula F to uh, an independent set problem. We'll call that A, B, C, and T. We'll superscript that with F to denote that it's coming from the three set formula. So we are trying to map this formula to uh, a three dimensional matching problem. Okay, uh, so like we did with Hamiltonian cycle, I'm going to give a sketch of this proof. It's uh, sort of tedious to write down all the details. I'm also not going to give you parts two and parts three uh, written out carefully. I'm going to give you the intuition behind them, but I'm not going to give you the, the details just in the interest of time. Uh, okay, so good. So what is the idea here? So as usual, we're trying to solve three set with a black box for y. We somehow need to use the constraints of three-dimensional matching to enforce the constraints of three set. And, and what are our constraints of three set? Our constraints of three set are that each clause has one representative true literal, and representative true literals uh, uh, are consistent. Usually, the, the place to start with one of these things is to think about how do I, how do I make the clauses be consistent? OK, and that comes out with thinking about you know, each of the variables. And so you know, coming up with what's called variable gadgets, you know, representing the, the variables in the problem of reducing two. So we're going to have to represent variables somehow in, in three-dimensional matching. And somehow the perfect matching constraint is going to have to enforce that, uh, that, that uh, our variables are taking consistently. OK, so here is the idea. So we're going to have our variables z1, z2, etc. And we're going to represent them uh, by, again, and, and triples look like, look like this, right? So we're going to represent. variables by these uh, things that look like flowers. OK, and um, so one thing that you can notice here by the flowers is that if you look at each of these triples, I'm going to have them go uh, uh, each triple. So I'm just going to number them. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We've got eight of them here. OK. And we'll have them go from A to B to A to B to A to B to A to B. To B. OK, and then the tip is going to be a C. OK, each of these tips is going to be one of the Cs. These are all you know, different vertices, of course, but I'm just telling you which set they're in. They're, these are in the C set. OK. And the thing to notice about what I've done here is if this corresponds, this is going to correspond to, to Z1. And notice that if I want a perfect matching, I can either take all of the odd triples or all of the even triples. OK, so imagine I'm going to take all of the odd triples. OK, and so if I take all the odd triples, um, that leaves all the even triples, the, the C vertices on the even triples open. Uh, but actually, being open is not great, right? Because 
I need a perfect matching. Okay, so I have to somehow be able to match up the tips on the ones that are still open now. Okay, uh, but here's the idea. I'm going to have a clause, CJ, and it's going to have an A vertex and a B vertex. And if this clause CJ was CJ is equal to uh, X1 uh, or X2 or X, whoops. Z1 or Z2 or Z3. So if this clause CJ was equal to Z1 or Z2 or Z3, then uh, I'm going to make it so that I can get this, this tip that corresponds to uh, by putting a triple that lets me collect that tip. Okay, and so imagine this is the jth tip. So the jth tip um, would let you collect the CJ uh, clause. Okay, and in fact, you know, any of the clauses that need to can collect these, these tips uh, if those are open. So being open corresponds to being able to go and collect that clause. Okay, so we're just going to do this. For every variable, we're going to set up these, these flowers. Uh, and for every clause, we're going to put um, triples going either to the even or to the odd uh, uh, triples in the petals of the, of the flower. Okay. Um, okay, well, that's good. Um, but, you know, if this clause has, you know, some other variable, it might, you know, be going like this and, and you know, maybe, you know, not there, there's some extra vertices that still need to be collected to sort of make this be uh, uh, every. So, uh, you know, we sort of got things right here, um, but we're we're missing um, we're missing uh, there. There may be just some extra tips we have to collect. So what we're going to do is so basically we have um, a variable gadget. These are the, the flowers, okay? And uh, we have the clause gadget. Uh, and these can collect the tips of the flowers to make the clause true. Um, but the, there are going to be like lots of extra tips on these flowers we still have to collect. So what I want to do is I want to make exactly the right number of, well, I'll call this, uh, you know, garbage collection. Exactly the right number of uh, additional gadgets that I can just collect any extra tips I might have. Okay, and how many tips do we have? So, um, each clause can possibly be connected. We're gonna have each clause, we're gonna make sure that uh, each flower has uh, 2M tips, because each clause could collect to it either positively or negatively. So, these are gonna have 2M tips, okay, and how many clause gadget, uh, uh, gadgets are there? Well, they're going to be M clause gadgets, 
OK, uh, and so each clause gadget can only collect one of these 2m tips, and they're n variables. So we have n times 2m tips total, but only m of them got collected by clause gadgets uh, to make the clauses true. And so we need to garbage collect uh, 2m n minus m tips. Uh, we need to garbage collect. And so we're just going to create uh, this many extra vertices. We'll call them G1 through G2, M, N minus M. And this is just going to be a pair. They're going to look like this. There's going to be an A and a B. And they're just going to connect to some tip. OK? Uh, and in fact, uh, we're going to put, uh, they're going to connect to all the tips. Okay, we're just not going to care which ones they connect to. And um, we are in a, in a matching problem, and having extra triples doesn't really, isn't really going to be a problem. So we're just going to connect uh, to every tip. OK, so what's going to happen uh, in this construction? So we already saw some properties. You know, so properties are one, uh, in order to, you know, make the, the variable gadgets okay, we have to take basically even or odd. Okay, so. Okay, and the garbage collection gadgets are going to collect to. Uh, 2nm minus m tips, which means they're going to leave m tips. OK. And the only way we can connect, collect those m tips is if we actually hook them up to clauses for which uh, assigning that variable that way would make that clause true. OK. Cool. So at this point in time, this is our construction. You, know, you can write it down carefully. I uh, refer you to the book to see it carefully written down. Uh, we now have to do part uh, two and part three, which are the uh, backwards and forwards uh, certificate construction. OK, and these, these are what show that it's an if and only if, that uh, the formula is satisfiable if and only if this three-dimensional matching problem has a perfect matching. OK, and uh, as I, I promised, I give you just a little bit of intuition for this. Uh, and what is the intuition? Well, again, the forward part three, the forward direction is the easy direction because we made this construction to satisfy this, to, to you know, to thinking about 3SAT. OK, so what would we do uh, if we have a, a satisfying assignment Z? Uh, well, I'm just going to choose the, the variable gadgets in the right orientation corresponding to that satisfying assignment. OK, uh, and then uh, that's going to allow me to pick up one of the, that's going to, you know, because it's a satisfying assignment, we know every clause is a true literal. So we know that there's a tip available to, co for, to connect every, collect every clause. OK, and now there's a remaining 2mn minus m tips. And the garbage collection uh, 
gadgets are connected to all of them. And so we can just collect the rest of them with garbage collection. OK, so that was uh, part three. That was the easy part. And then uh, how does how does part two go? Uh, well, uh, that's the backwards direction. So we're saying, OK, um, we have a, a uh, three-dimensional matching. We need to argue that this means it must be satisfiable. Um, now, and then you just have to sort of you know, do the math that we just did to enforce that. Well, it must have been that we collected all the clauses. We only collect the clauses if we have the tips free, uh, which correspond to things being the right assignment. And uh, uh, and and uh, uh, et cetera. OK, so you work back through the construction. You see that that, that we did it. Uh, we did it right. Cool. OK, so there you have it. Uh, again, pretty briefly and, and, and high level, but hopefully just to try to give you the idea of, of how these three SAT reductions tend to go. Um, again, uh, 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 we, you know, we have our constraints. Uh, we need to use the constraints of, of three-dimensional matching uh, to ensure the constraints of three SAT. And what are those constraints? Each clause has one uh, representative true literal, and each representative true literal, uh, 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 the representative true, true literals are all taken consistently. Okay, and so you see these, you know, these flower gadgets make it sure that we take the true literals consistently, and then each clause having one true literal. That's how we sort of, you know, use these tips to then pick up these clauses. We had to pick up a clause by one of the tips. Uh, okay. Um, so again, uh, that's three-dimensional matching problem, and uh, that is concludes our our final uh, lecture of this of this series on uh, three sat re reductions from three sat. Uh, and you know, if we believe that three sat is hard, now we must believe that three-dimensional matching is hard, uh, uh, at least as hard. Great, thank you so much. Hope you enjoyed the lectures.